what's up guys, my name is Jake and welcome to Abandoned, episode 56. Back in late 2014, for the third episode of Abandoned, I covered the interesting and drawn out history of the Disney Skyway attraction. It was an early episode in the series and since then, there have been quite a lot of developments and updates on the once abandoned relics. So for this episode, I wanted to take another look at the iconic Disney attraction and find out what is actually left. So let's once again take a look at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Skyway. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Sign up today by going to curiositystream.com skyway or by clicking the link in the description below. The beginnings of this attraction can be traced all the way back to Walt Disney himself traveling to Switzerland. There, he visited the Von Roll Company, who had been developing a small aluminum cabin gondola system. Walt loved the idea of aerial transport and purchased the system from Von Roll for his park, which had just opened a year prior. So, the Disneyland Skyway opened on June 26, 1956, becoming the first aerial ropeway system in the United States. The attraction was a hit, and through the decade, it continued to offer guests scenic views high above the park. But of course, Disneyland never stayed still, and by 1959, a series of major additions were built in the park, including the submarines, a motorboat cruise, the monorail, and of course, the Matterhorn. However, space was already pretty limited, so the last and tallest attraction needed to be built directly in the path of the popular Skyway. So what do you do? Well, you build the mountain around the attraction, now allowing the gondolas to run directly through the bobsled structure. So, the Skyway closed for a couple years until it reopened alongside these other major attractions, which really transformed the skyline of Disneyland. The Skyway continued its operation for some time afterwards, transporting people from the Fantasyland station up around 60 feet in the air, then down into Tomorrowland, a three and a half minute trip which guests absolutely loved. Eventually, vehicle imagineer Bob Gurr had redesigned the gondola cars themselves into a more modern design. The Skyway was now a true showcase of what another form of future transportation could look like. Meanwhile, Von Roll was busy trying to sell as many Type 101 systems as possible. It was an interesting time when many major theme parks across the world installed their own Skyway attractions. From zoos to amusement parks, the popularity of them skyrocketed. After all, it was a relatively cheap way for a park to build an observation cabin which doubled as a legitimate transportation method. Disneyland continued to operate their attraction through the 1960s, just as the company was planning their next theme park property. Interestingly, the Skyway is absent in some of the early concepts for Florida's Magic Kingdom. However, once construction started, it was clear that the famous Disneyland attraction would have a counterpart in Kissimmee. So, alongside the park's grand opening in October of 1971, the Magic Kingdom Skyway had opened to the public. The Florida version was actually slightly longer due to the size of the park as well as the fact that the system had a turning station. Like in Disneyland, you could board within Fantasyland and soar high above the park until you reached the Tomorrowland turning platform, which would line you up for the last stretch of your journey into the Tomorrowland station which, a few years later, had Space Mountain built behind it. Now, both Magic Kingdom parks had skyways dominate their sightlines, and the trend continued as Disney geared up for their first international park in Japan. In 1983, Tokyo Disneyland opened as much of the Florida park had been cloned there. Of course, that meant the popular scenic attraction would carry into Japan, also opening with the park. However, this version of the Skyway was quite different, only spanning a small length of the west side of the park while also having enclosed cabins. The Skyway was now operating in three Disney parks, almost a fourth as we move into the late 80s. During the development of Euro Disneyland, the Discoveryland section of the park was planned to have their own gondola attraction, high above their version of Tomorrowland called the Hyperion Skyway. However, this concept never came to fruition, and the park opened without the iconic attraction in the early 1990s. It was the first Magic Kingdom theme park to open without a Skyway attraction, and this initiated a coming decade which would see its end. Over in Disneyland, the attraction began causing some problems. The tallest point of the attraction was attached to the superstructure of the Matterhorn bobsleds. According to Disney, the years of constant daily use was putting serious strain on the internal beams, causing metal fatigue. Apparently, the Matterhorn was developing cracks that would be too costly to fix if kept running. 
Public perception was shifting too, as some guy jumped off one of the buckets claiming it was unsafe and sued Disney. However, he later admitted that he did it on purpose. These coupled with the large operating cost, the low guest capacity, and the fallout from the Euro Disney financial disaster had all accumulated. Disneyland announced that their Skyway would close on November 9th, 1994. As Disneyland Skyway was disassembled and the Matterhorn spaces filled in, Tokyo's iteration had closed too in 1998 for the construction of a new dark ride. This left just Walt Disney World with the only operating Skyway attraction, which many figured its days were numbered. For a while, the attraction always had some sort of reputation for being unsafe, mostly unwarranted with almost a spotless safety record. This came to a sudden and tragic end, however, in February of 1999, when a janitor who was cleaning the Tomorrowland station platform had been caught by the ride accidentally turning on. He instinctively grabbed onto one of the gondolas and trying to board it, yet lost his grip and fell to his death. This fact, along with the other operational and cost issues somewhat similar to what Disneyland had, finally cemented the fate of the attraction. So on November 10th, 1999, the Magic Kingdom Skyway and the last of its kind across the Disney parks had closed permanently. Both Disneyland and Walt Disney World had their immediate sightlines of the attraction removed, like the turning station and the massive pillars. The more themed elements of the attraction, however, were surprisingly left intact. Now this is where we get into the abandoned portion of this episode, as Disney had essentially just left the former Skyway stations at both parks essentially abandoned. Over in Florida, both the Fantasyland and Tomorrowland station had been left almost untouched after the main attraction was removed. It isn't really known why these facilities were left dormant, however, I have a feeling it has something to do with money, as it usually does. The late 90s were a bad time for the parks, and having these relatively small buildings, which were essentially just empty boxes with themed exteriors, really posed no issue having them just sit empty. After all, they were sort of just tucked away, and only stood as monuments of the former attraction for those who even knew, which, as the years went by, became less and less. Spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to demolish these buildings were likely never fully budgeted, and that coupled with the tourism crash of 2001, I'm sure made the decision less appealing. Around eight years later though, in mid-2009, progress was finally made. The second floor of the Tomorrowland station, which once held the on and off load as well as the queue, had been torn down. The core of the building, including the washrooms below, had been left as they were, and the structure had just become a small bathroom facility. On the other side of the park in Fantasyland, that station was now slowly decaying away. For some time, the outdoor portion of the queue was used as a character meet and greet, as the unused theme structure loomed over the pathways below. Rare photos inside showed the disused station slowly rotting away. As the lights remained on inside, mildew began to grow on the walls as foliage from behind crept in. Finally though, it too was demolished entirely in 2011 for new, Tangled-themed bathrooms. But what about Disneyland Skyway relics? Well, weirdly enough, their Fantasyland station was too left in an abandoned state. The station had been slowly covered by thick foliage and was left in a state of disrepair and decay. By the early 2010s, you could really only see it if you knew what you were looking for, and it was only a matter of time until the land was slated for redevelopment. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was announced in early 2016, and construction subsequently started in April. The now seemingly tucked away former Skyway Station had been zoned just on the outskirts of this new development. So in 2016, it was demolished once construction for the new land inched its way towards it, which finally marked the last standing relic of the original Skyway, 22 years after it had closed. The Skyway, a significant attraction dominating the skyline of three major Disney parks, was now gone. In July of 2017, Disney announced what they called the Skyliner, a gondola transport system which would connect four resort hotels and two theme parks in Walt Disney World. After around two years of construction, it opened in late 2019, and it really is the spiritual successor of the original Skyway. The Disney Skyliner is definitely intended to be a legitimate mode of transportation, and it does succeed, moving lots of people and modern cabins able to fit 10. So really, despite the attraction now long gone, the entire point of it lives on in quite an interesting way. 
pretty much all traces of the Skyway are now gone. Of course, all of the abandoned stations have now been removed, all but the lower level of the Tomorrowland Station in Walt Disney World, which actually does still stand today. Disneyland Tokyo and Florida are all just memories now, but that's not necessarily a sad thing. Walt Disney was a man who loved future technology, especially transportation, and Disneyland was a place for him to display that to the world. The whole point of bringing Von Roll's system to America was to delight guests with soaring views and moving people. The system built in the 1950s, however, was cumbersome and not very practical at a large scale. Like Disney PR had stated back in the 90s, it's just something whose time has come. However, while the Skyway was missed and its station sat abandoned for some years, I think the Walt Disney World Skyliner is everything Walt Disney intended it to be. It's the rare time when the company had taken one of Disneyland's 50s dreams of the future and made it a working, practical reality. While the Skyway was a classic attraction that is missed by many, the Von Roll systems are actually still in place even today. This is just a testament to how popular and well-made they were for being so old. So, as we look to the future, perhaps the Skyway idea was never really abandoned. This episode of Abandoned is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get tons of high-quality and intriguing documentaries perfect for anyone who enjoys these types of videos. When signing up for CuriosityStream, you will also get access to Nebula, a creator-run streaming service which hosts tons of like-minded creators who upload both content that wouldn't work on YouTube as well as extra and ad-free videos. There, you can also view my videos at least one full day before they go live here on YouTube, so it's really a special community for people who like this type of content. Subscriptions start at just $2.99 a month, however, if you use my special link, curiositystream.com skyway, you can get an annual membership of 26% off. That's just $14.75 for an entire year. And since CuriosityStream and Nebula have partnered up, you get both services for the price of one. It's truly one of the best deals for this much content. So if you want to support my videos and get even more from me and my fellow creators, sign up today at curiositystream.com skyway. That's S-K-Y-W-A-Y. -A, a link will also be in the description below. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.